We're on the record. This is a matter of Zachary Coughlin, case number 06M13755. And um, today's date is May 10th, and it is the third day of the hearing. And are you ready to call your next witness? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The State Bar calls uh, Mike Toms to the stand. Okay. Given this matter, of will be the truth, whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, I do. Please be seated and state and spell your first and last name for the record. My name is Michael Wayne Toms. My first name is M I C H A E L. Last name is T O M S. Good morning, Mr. Toms. Good morning. Are you currently employed? Yes. Where are you employed? At the Sacramento County District Attorney Laboratory of Forensic Services. And uh, do you have a title? Yes. What is your title? Supervising Criminalist. Okay. And how long have you been employed um, as a supervising criminalist? Um, for approximately a month now. And what about before that? Uh, before that, I was a criminalist for six years at the same laboratory. Prior to that, I was a criminalist for six years at the Santa Clara County uh, Laboratory of Forensic Services. And prior to that, I worked for a private forensic laboratory known as Drug Detection Laboratory for three and a half years. Do you have any special uh, certifications or degrees? Uh, well, I have a Bachelor's of Science in Forensic Science, a minor in Chemistry from Sacramento State University. Uh, I've completed... Attention, Your Honor, relevance. Overruled. I've completed courses from the Federal Bureau of Investigations, the Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, the Society of Forensic Toxicologists, the University of Indiana, or of um, Santa Cruz, dealing with the effects, pharmacology of uh, various drugs. And um, in your position uh, currently, do, uh, what are your job duties? Well, currently I supervise uh, 10 forensic uh, criminalists that uh, analyze bloods, uh, urine, uh, biological tissues and fluids, and uh, solid dose substances um, for the presence of uh, toxic substances or illicit compounds. What about in 2003? What were your job duties then? In 2003, um, I was working uh, with this same laboratory I was a... Uh, Objection, Your Honor, relevance. If we're worried about time, I, I don't see where it's we're overruled. going. It's overruled. Or what we're doing with this. It's overruled. All right. I've, uh, I go on and on with stuff and not you can do show whatever you, what you I'm want with it when, for, you ter when okay, good. your turn comes up. Okay, just as long as I can. Which is known as cross-examination. Okay. You're a lawyer. You should know better. Yeah, I do know that. Just and as long I'm as I can keep that, going on and on with stuff where we don't know where it's going and, and take up a lot of time My that sense way. is you have no idea how to act like a lawyer. But let's go on. Well, I did go to UNLV, so. Mr. Thomas, if you can continue. Prior to that, I was a criminalist, and I worked in the forensic uh, toxicology section of the laboratory, which also included the uh, alcohol section as well. Okay. I'd like you to turn to... Um, what in the exhibit binder is marked as Exhibit 68. Do you see Exhibit 68? Yes, I do. And it's a two-page exhibit. Could you look at both pages, please? Do you recognize uh, Exhibit 68? Yes. How do you recognize it? It's a uh, toxicology report and a alcohol analysis report from the Laboratory of Forensic Services of Sacramento County. Okay. Can you explain what um, actually? Can you um, explain what's contained in, on page one of Exhibit sixty-eight? <clears throat> uh, yes. It's a toxicology report um, by 
criminalist Lisa Coughlin uh, and reviewed by criminalist Debbie, Debbie Henry. Um, the results of the testing that were performed included the presence of 11 nor 9 carboxy THC and hydrocodone. Can you explain what those two substances are? Uh, 11 nor 9 carboxy THC is an inactive metabolite of marijuana uh, from uh, use of marijuana. And hydrocodone is also commonly known as Vicodin. It's a uh, prescription narcotic for pain relief. Now, is there um, anything else that 11 or 9 carboxy THC could be other than marijuana? Um, well, it's actually a metabolite of marijuana. It's what the body converts it into. So the person would have had to have ingested marijuana at some point in time uh, for their urine to contain this compound. Now, can you tell from this report when the person ingested marijuana? No. Okay. Do you have um, any idea in your own um, experience um, what... Uh, Objection, Your Honor, relevancy. Overrule. Um, when a person, in order to test um, with these substances detected and confirmed, um, the amount of marijuana that someone would have to ingest? Um, no, you wouldn't be able to tell the amount. All you could do is talk about the range of time that a person possibly used within. And, and what is that range of time? Um, typically, marijuana, this, this particular compound, 11 uh, or 9 carboxy THC, can be detected uh, one to three days after use. Uh, if a person is a chronic user, then it can be as much as 60 days if, if they use it chronically. I have no further questions at this time. Cross examination. Um, you say 60 days? Yes, yeah, 60 days would be an extreme for somebody who chronically uses the drug. Um, all right, Mr. Toms, what would be uh, someone? You say one to three days for someone who has used it, maybe what, like once or twice, or? Infrequent user, if they use it maybe um, once a week, small, small doses. Depends on their body chemistry. Uh, this, this particular compound is a lipophilic drug, means that it likes to store in, in fat, in the body fat, so it can be released later on. So if you're a heavy user, then it could store in, in your system for a long period of time. Okay, and you said someone would have had to ingest marijuana. Can you tell me what that means? They could have uh, eaten it or smoked it. Okay, could they have been in the same room as other people smoking marijuana? Um, at the level that was detected in this particular sample, um, there has been studies that shown passive inhalation as uh, a possibility. Somebody could have a level at that, but uh, the scenario that was performed was uh, unrealistic. It was several people sitting in a car size uh, area, and there was so much smoke. A car, you say? In a car sized area. Please don't interrupt disrupt an answer and let Mr. him finish Honor. his answer? There was so much smoke pumped into the um, area that the participants had to uh, wear goggles. So uh, to get these, this type of a level, um, it, that's a pretty unrealistic scenario. Why did they wear goggles? Because there was so, so much smoke pumped into the room that they weren't smoking, that they weren't actively like puffing on. They would, were just sitting in the room. Would they have gone blind if they hadn't worn goggles? No, but their eyes were irritated, and that's why they, they requested goggles. Would their eyes have gotten red? Is that what you mean by irritated? Yes, yeah, certainly. Okay. But there, nothing more substantial than that? No, I would say not. Okay. I, I would think not. So maybe wearing goggles is a little melodramatic? No, it's, it's, it's actually important to know that because it lets you know how much smoke was piled into this small area, which okay. makes it the unrealistic scenario that I spoke but, of. Uh, what, and these people were Californians? I have no idea. No, okay. No, 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 it's already come in the answer. He had no idea whether they were Californians. Okay. Okay. Well, and can you tell me, would these people wear goggles if there were cigarettes being smoked in the car? Objection relevance. I'm going to go ahead and let him answer I, it. I don't know if there was um, cigarettes being smoked in the car, but um, it wasn't mentioned in the scientific study, so I would say no. That's, that's not what I, I, I'm not sure you understand my question. 
I'm asking, let's say there's not marijuana in the car, and they're just, for some reason, they're testing cigarettes or something, and there's several people in a car, and several of them are smoking. Would you have provided goggles in that case? Objection relevance. I'm going to go ahead and let it, <laughs> for the record. Uh, well, if they put enough smoke in there that would irritate the eyes of the people and they requested goggles, I would, I would tend to give them goggles, yes. Okay, so it's, it's maybe nothing specific to marijuana that you need goggles? No. No. It's just smoke? Irritation to the eyes. Okay. It was just a way for me to describe to you how much smoke was in this confined space. Okay. And can you tell me what this 11 nor um, carboxy THC, is that uh, just saying... There's this chemical in this person's urine, or is that saying there's this level of chemical in this? Is, is it specifying a, a level? Not on this report, um, but I did bring the uh, a chromatogram that has the quantitative value. Okay, was this chromatogram propounded earlier to um, opposing counsel? Because if not, I'd like to object on the basis of hearsay. What, what, what's your question? Well, I'm making an objection. You're the one that asked the question, and you got an answer. And he responded referring to a document, presumably, that I've never been provided with, a chromatogram. Um, and it's, as far as I can tell, it's, it hasn't been propounded, it hasn't been put into evidence, and it hasn't been okay. designated and do as Do you have that document with you? Yes. I'd object to entering that document at this stage in the trial. Wow. You opened up the question. Can I, can I come up with documents and witnesses out of the blue right now? Would that be all right, too, that I haven't propounded earlier? The state bar prosecutor brought it up. Um, you certainly could. Uh, would you want me to give you the but complete only if they packet brought it or up. just okay. the complete packet or just the one? What are you referring to? What did you? I'm not sure. Okay. Why don't we ask another question, then? Are you going to withdraw that question? Sure. Okay, the question's withdrawn. Mm, I have nothing further. Okay, do you have anything further? No, Your Honor. Thank you. You may step down. Thank you. Good use of time. Good use of time and money. That's, that's good. Your Honor, I would ask that um, Mr. Coughlin be refrained from making some <laughs> remarks Mr. other Coughlin, than um, his question. I've asked you a number of times to refrain from making remarks. I, and I'd ask that Ms. Kay can be refrained from making remarks in, in histrionics. Okay. Can we... Can, thanks. I just don't understand why he's being called. What did that accomplish? It took 30 minutes. Are you getting paid by the witness? Or? Okay, for the record, it's accomplishing. You had, you had, you asserted in your application that you were not under the influence of marijuana, right? The State Bar is entitled to bring witnesses that say that you were under the influence of marijuana. It's quite simple. But that didn't pr that didn't speak to that at all. It just spoke to what we already. I'm not going to argue. You can make that in your we closing argument. Marijuana in this report that was submitted. So what did it? There should have been a stipulation. Something? The parties did not enter into a stipulation. When parties don't enter into a stipulation, then the state bar has to put on all their witnesses, as you do too. Okay. Could they have just referred to this report? It's hearsay without the witness coming in. Okay. So, who's your next witness? Your Honor, I uh, recall Mr. Coughlin. Okay, Mr. Coughlin, please take the stand. Okay. Can I call Ms. Kagan to the stand? She's yeah. not on trial. You are. But, what, what, but can, I'm not asking her to be on trial. No, you can't be a call her. So she won't be able to be called no. as a witness. <clears throat> Seems symmetrical. Excuse me, Your Honor. Please, 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 please,
Uh, Mr. Coughlin, are you under, do you understand that you're under oath? Um, or do you want to take the oath again? I understand I'm under oath. Okay, thank you. Mr. Coughlin, do you currently consume alcohol? Um, objection. Overruled. I would object on the basis of uh, confidentiality, privilege. It's overruled. Okay. I'm not sure I understand your question. Do you currently consume alcohol? Do you currently drink alcohol? Um, I'm currently drinking water. Have you had a drink of alcohol in the past year? Mm, I don't believe so. When is the last time you had a drink of alcohol? I'm not sure. Isn't it true that you told uh, the LAP program that the last time you had alcohol was January 28th, 2003? I'm not sure. Okay, let's turn to Exhibit 71. Excuse me. Objection relevance. Overruled. And this exhibit has been, uh, I believe it was authenticated or. You stipulated to it, Mr. Coughlin. I did? I, no, I'm sorry. You didn't stipulate. It has been admitted. Evidence. Page 52. At, at what point did it, did it become admitted? On the first day of trial. When we went through a number of exhibits? Yes. Okay, because I don't remember going through this one. Uh, 72 was admitted, pages 33 to 57. Please turn to page 52. Okay. So we're just doing the, can I, Your Honor, I, I'd like to stipulate to have the entire exhibit admitted then. Is there any objection? No objection, okay. Your Honor. Then um, 72 is admitted into evidence in its entirety. Are you on uh, Exhibit 72, page 52? Yes, I am. Okay. And under Section F, it says, I have been sober since January 28, 2003. Correct? Um, I believe it says that. Okay. So what page is that? It's 52. Okay. So let's just get this straight. Pages 31 through 57, is that your lap intake questionnaire? Um, I'm not sure. Well, it says, uh, page 31, it says lap intake questionnaire, correct? Right, but I don't know that you haven't doctored this or done something else with it. You know. Well, um, at the top it says, note, please use with typed responses on separate pages, correct? Uh, I can't read that. And um, it's dated 6 The handwriting is kind of sloppy. 628.05, please tell us about yourself, name Zachary B. Coughlin, correct? I think that's what it says. Now, is that your handwriting, Mr. Coughlin? I'm not sure. Do you think somebody else submitted this on your behalf? Uh, objection calls for speculation. Um, overruled. Okay. I'm not sure, Susan. So I'd like you to um, review the document, pages 31. This confidential questionnaire? pages 31 through 57, and um, let me know if this is something that you turned into LAP. Sure. Um, oh, I remember LAP made a big deal about how they had this confidential program, this confidential questionnaire, and so I believe I did fill out a confidential questionnaire for their confidential program at some point. Okay, then I'd like and you to turn to, it. actually, um, if you could just... Um, Review that document first and let me know whether or not that's something you turned into lap. And then I will uh, go on to something else. Uh, I'm not sure whether I turned this into lap, Susan. Okay. 
Okay, um, I'd like you to turn to Exhibit 49 very quickly. And uh, Exhibit 49 is entitled Authorization for Disclosure and Release of Information. Signed, Zach Coughlin, dated June 24, 2005. Is uh, so this something that you filled out, Mr. Coughlin? Um, I believe so. And uh, this is this says at the top, I, Zach Coughlin, hereby authorize lawyer assistance program of the State Bar of California here and after lap or program to disclose and or obtain inf information files or records pertaining to me including information files or records concerning drug, alcohol treatment or use, psychiatric treatment, AIDS, HIV, and other communicable, communicable diseases, test results and or diagnosis and treatment with the State Bar of California Committee of Bar Examiners. Correct? Um, I'm not sure. This says it's good for one year from 6-2405, so I guess it's, it's no longer good or so. But was it good at the time that you signed it, Mr. Coughlin? I don't know. But you did provide this? to LAP, correct? Mm, I think so. And in fact, you provided a renewed authorization on April 20th of this year, didn't you? Uh, I'm not sure. I remember you making a lot of threats if I didn't, but you know, very coercive type behavior on your part. What I'd like to do is turn back to the original Exhibit 72 and uh, go back to page 52. Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Well, I just don't see a release for all this information. It's past that. It's been released. Go no ahead. What's, um, it's overruled. It's been released it's without lapse The objection is overruled. Okay. Okay. And, um, Can you sh tell me the release, though? It's overruled. So I don't get to know where the release is? No. Okay. You need to figure that out on your own. Do we not need to have a release for that confidential program? I'm not answering the question. I'm not here. Okay, so just let the record state that we don't know where the release is. Mr. Coughlin, are you stating right now that you didn't provide a release dated April 20th, 2007 to the State Bar? I'm not sure. Let's just go ahead with the next question in okay. terms of... Now, I, I pointed you to um, some language in, on page 52. I have been sober since January 28, 2003. Was that a true statement when you made it, Mr. Coughlin? Um, I'm not sure. Do you have a date of sobriety? Uh, I'm not sure. Now, Mr. Coughlin, you testified earlier... And can you define what you mean by sobriety? When is the last date you drank alcohol, Mr. Coughlin? That's what you mean by sobriety? Indeed. That's your definition of sobriety? I'm not sure. Did you drink alcohol in 2007? Um, not that I remember. Did you drink alcohol in 2006? Mm, I'm not sure. Did you drink alcohol in 2005? Not sure. Did you drink alcohol? Well, let me let me go through this for a second. Um, you lived at. Um, An objection, Your Honor. If I tell her I'm not sure, and she wants to go year by year, isn't that badgering the witness or? Not yet. Repetitive. Not yet. Mr. Coughlin, did you drink alcohol in 2004? Objection, Your Honor. What's the objection? Badgering the witness. Overruled. What year was that? 2004. Did I do what? Drink alcohol. Mm, can you define what you mean by drink alcohol? Did you, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> I'm a little flustered. Do you have a question about what, yeah, the, what like, uh, drink alcohol Yeah, like say means? there's rum raisin ice cream and there's alcohol in that and you ingest it. Is that drinking alcohol? Well, Mr. Coughlin, do you believe that's drinking alcohol? Well, I'm asking you, Ms. Kagan. Okay, she's to ask the question. It's direct examination. Okay. So and I'm you're trying not to understand to what she's questions. asking. Okay. Okay. I don't understand your question then. 
I don't know, mouthwash with alcohol in it, if you consume that, if it seeps into your, uh, the membranes in your mouth, if that's drinking, I don't know, so. Okay, let's go through, in a, do you, uh, in the past. Not to say I did that, but I'd like to know. In the past whether or three not years, have you consumed drinking. any beer? Mm, I don't think so. In the past. I'm not sure. For years, have you consumed any wine? I'm not sure. In the past four years, have you smoked or ingested marijuana? I'm not sure. In the past four years, did you ever keep alcohol? Can I object, Your Honor, on the basis of... Overruled. Uh, so we, I don't even get to say what the basis is. That's, that's what's up, right? Sure, what's the basis? No, never mind. Okay. Next oh, question. Oh, right, the basis Fifth Amendment. It's overruled. Okay, so I don't, I'm on stand, but I don't have a constitutional right. No. Say so if she asked me, did you murder this person to not incriminate myself? I don't have that constitutional right. That's not the question. But Looks, it's that, it's any the, question that involves incrimination. Mr. Coughlin. I'm just wondering if the Fifth Amendment still applies in this country. Do you understand what a court procedure is? I think it. I think it's something that the Constitution attaches to. Okay, great. So I what's think, the next question? I don't know. Is the Constitution attached to this? The next question. Did you drink wine in the past four years? I'm not sure. In the past four years, did you keep any alcohol in your residence? I can't remember. Did you keep any um, drug paraphernalia in your residence in the past four years? Overruled. Do you keep know. any drug paraphernalia in your... I wouldn't know. I don't keep track of everything that's in my residence. Did you ever keep... Well, let's go back for a second. You lived at 1255 Jones Street, apartment 132 in Reno, Nevada, from October 2004 through April 2006, correct? Um, I don't know. What do you mean by live there? Mr. Coughlin... Do you, do you have a question about what live means? Yeah. What do you mean by it? Was that your residence? Um, I'm not sure. Okay, let's turn to Exhibit 3, page 2. Are you going to turn to that exhibit? No. Mr. Coughlin? Why don't you just go ahead and read it for me? Well, this is your update to the State Bar dated February 15, 2007. And on page two, it says um, April 2000, excuse me, October 2004 through April 2006, 1255 Jones, number 132, Reno, Nevada, 89503. And that's under residence history. Mm -hmm. Was that a true statement? Well, you asked me if I lived there, right? I asked you if that was your residence. Uh, I don't remember you asking that. Well, the question now is, is that your, was, was that, that your, your residence? residence? Was that my residence at that time? Yes. I, th I'm, I think so. And you lived alone at that residence, correct? Mm, I don't know. Really? I don't know because that you could say that. When I asked I had you that at your deposition, stay over different times. Mr. Coffin, when I asked you that same question at your deposition, you testified that you lived alone at that address. Well, that depends what you mean by live. Why don't we go on to the next question? Can I use the restroom, Your Honor? I'll give you a five-minute break. Great. Thanks so much. Back on the record. Back on the record. Resuming with the directive, Mr. Coughlin. Uh, I just want to direct your attention, Mr. Coughlin, to Exhibit 57, uh, page 108, um, when you were asked about the um, unlawful detainer actions that took place on Jones Street. Um, question, did you have a roommate at the time? Answer, no. Question, you were living alone? Answer, yes, I was. Do you have a question? That's what you stated at your, uh, that's what you testified at your deposition, correct? I'm not sure. Now, I'd like to talk about the um, eviction that took place at 1255 Jones Street, apartment 132. 
Um, but that certainly doesn't mean that I don't have people over. Uh, could you describe what occurred uh, regarding that eviction? No. Were you um, were you provided notice of that eviction, Mr. Coughlin? I'm not sure. Let's turn to um, Exhibit 63, please. Objection, Your Honor. Relevancy. I need to look at Exhibit 63. Okay. Overrule. Okay. Exhibit 63 has to do with um, the unlawful detainer that happened at 1255 Jones Street, Apartment 132. Correct? I'm not sure. It's your exhibit. And, um... Page two of that exhibit is in the Justice Court of Reno Township in and for the County of Washoe, State of Nevada. River Arms Apartments versus Objection. Zachary can, B. Coughlin. Can we call it Nevada because I'm not calling this California or, you know. It's Nevada. Nevada. Can you say that? Can you make those sounds with your mouth? Case number REV 2006-00909. Now, you already testified that where, you... Uh, where was this? What state was this in? You already testified that um, you... I'm not sure where you're talking about. That Mr. this unlawful detainer did occur. Here's a warning. Where? The court's going to issue a warning to you. If you do not act and comport yourself in accordance with a lawyer, then I'm going to ask that you be... I'm going to remove you from this courtroom. Okay? So let's answer a question to the best of your ability. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Your Honor, but okay. Okay. Now, you already testified earlier It's like that the standard for obscenity. You kind of know it when you see it, what's a lawyer and what's not a lawyer. Yes. Like if someone had gold teeth and cornrows and walked yes. in with gold chains, they, they wouldn't be a lawyer, right? Mr. Coughlin, there's no question pending. What's the next question? Um, now, you already testified earlier that um, you were, I mean, there was an unlawful detainer action against you in this case, correct? Um, I don't remember. Rings a bell. However, at your deposition, you testified that you didn't get notice of this unlawful detainer action or eviction, but you had to leave on the 19th when an officer came to your uh, residents to evict you, correct? I'm not sure about that. Exhibit 57, page 99. When uh, question lies starting with nine, line 19, what happened in the this process page of the 99 eviction? Page 99 you're talking about? Page 99, 57. Line 19. What happened in the 57? process? 57? Page 99? Exhibit Bait. 57. Date stamp 50, 99, because mine only go up to 51. Are you talking about the court reporter's page? Page 99 then? of the deposition transcript, Mr. Okay, Coughlin. so you're not going by bait stamps. Okay. There Could you read into the record the deposition transcript? Yes, I'm sorry. It is uh, line 19. Question. What happened in the process of the eviction? Answer. I was evicted. Question. Were you physically removed from the premises? Answer. An officer came to my premises and told me I was being evicted, which I didn't. That was the first I heard of that. I didn't know that. Something happened with the notice such that I didn't get it or wasn't aware, hadn't opened the letter. I'm not sure. And so on the 19th of that month, when the officer showed up and said, you're evicted, I did have to leave on that day. Question, and this is going on to page 100, starting at line 5, was that the same residence that was the subject of two unlawful detainer actions against you? Answer, I believe so, yes. 
Question, and those, and are those the unlawful detainer actions of the River Arms Apartments? Was the residence called River Arms Apartments? Answer, yes. Skipping down to page 101, starting on line 6. When did you first become, question, when did you first become aware of the judgments? Answer, I'm not sure. I don't know that by being aware that I'm evicted, I know that there's a judgment. I didn't understand that. And in your application that you filed, that was probably the first time I was aware that there was an actual case number and that they had won a judgment against me. Now, I'd like to return back to... Page, uh, exhibit 63. And on page 4, are you looking at exhibit 63, Mr. Coughlin? Yes, Susan. Page 4, please turn to page 4. Page 4 is an affidavit of service. And it states, Mark Strauss, being first duly sworn, deposes and says that Affian is a citizen of the United States, over 18 years of age, not a party to the within entered action, and that in the county of Washoe, state of Nevada, personally served that the described document upon, person served Zachary B. Coughlin by serving posted location 1255 Jones Street, number 132, Reno, Nevada, date April 19, 2006, time 1241 p.m. Now, Mr. Coughlin, was that notice, um, which is reflected on page two of the same exhibit, posted on your door at 132? I don't know. May I approach your honor? reflect that I am taking the originals of exhibits 73A through M. Mr. Coughlin, I'm going to show you what's marked as exhibit 73A. It is a picture this of... This is A through M? Yes. It is a picture of because a door with a number... Because this not up in here. Yes, I have it right in my hand. But why isn't it in here? I see N and O, but I don't see A, B, C, D all the way to N. Mr. Coughlin, I am handing you a picture that is, uh, it in the one is you of a door here? numbered 132 with an eviction Objection. order on it. I haven't been provided with this. I don't know how I can you know, prepare for trial against him. Okay. Has he been provided with these no, this documents? Is, this is impeachment, Your Honor. Okay. I object if you're how, – how can you not provide this stuff and then show up on the day of the trial, you know? It's overruled. Um, let the record reflect that I'm showing, Your Honor, okay. Exhibit 73A. Mr. Coughlin, why, didn't, why don't I get a, a copy of these exhibits that you keep bringing up? Why didn't I get a copy of them? This is impeachment, Mr. Coughlin. So that doesn't mean you don't provide them. You're getting a copy now. You're looking at it. Well, then I request whatever. Here's Exhibit 73A, Mr. Coughlin. Do you recognize Exhibit 73A? No. That not that your door that you lived at at Jones Street? I don't know. The one you were evicted from? I don't know. It could be a door you've doctored up in Photoshop, or I don't know what it is. I'll keep this. Actually, that's the original. I'll give you a copy. Okay, I'll give you a copy. Please give her back the original. Well, I don't get to give her a copy? Get a copy. 
Eventually, after the trial's over, maybe I'll get a copy to prepare for it. Is that is that the case? Good. That Actually, sounds fair. Let the record reflect that I'm giving Mr. Coughlin a copy of exhibits A, 73A through 73M. For the first time on the third day of trial. Okay, Mr. Coughlin, um, I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit 73B. Let the record reflect I'm showing your honor. Okay, Mr. Coughlin, this is uh, exhibit 73B, and in this exhibit of the inside of apartment 132, there's a book, you can see a binder with the name of Hale Lane on it. Do you recognize this exhibit? Which one is that? 73B. Which one on here? Can you can you do these by number? I'm showing you the original, Mr. Coughlin. But I'd like to have it A through B so I can refer to them. Mr. Coughlin, I'm showing you the original. They're marked on the back. Okay. 73B, you say? Yes. What about him? Do you recognize this exhibit? No. What I, I mean, I was just provided with it. How could I recognize it? Why don't you right? take time to look at it? Okay. Now do you recognize it? No. Is this your apartment? I'm not sure. But you do see that there's a Hale Lane <clears throat> booklet on the uh, in the picture. On the I table. can't. I can't read that. Okay. Mr. Cobble, you did work at the law firm of Hale Lane, correct? Um, yes, I did. And uh, objection. Have these been authenticated, Your Honor? Um. I haven't offered them into evidence yet. How can they be presented if they haven't been offered into evidence? You're to look at them. They haven't been, they're not in evidence yet. They're not in evidence. They're not in but evidence yet. But they're in the yet. courtroom when we're talking about them. Yes. Objection. Uh, they're not authenticated. Mr. Coughlin, I'd like Objection to relevance. overruled. Objection relevance. Overruled. Objection foundation. Overruled. Let the record reflect that I'm showing your Honor, Exhibit 73C. Mr. Conklin, I'm showing you what's been marked Exhibit 73, 73C, which is a photo of alcoholic beverages, bottles, as well as a blue bong. Do you recognize Exhibit 73C? Um, I object to your characterization of those. Oh, what and would you call no, them? I don't recognize them. Take a minute to to look at those photos. I see empty bottles. I don't, I don't know. I see a drum set. I don't know what, what I don't know what the blue thing is. So. Okay, but do you recognize this exhibit? No. I haven't been provided with that exhibit either. Was, so. was this, well, you have it right in front of you. Now, was this um, it kept in your apartment at uh, 1255? I don't even know that this is my apartment. This is some picture. Okay, so the record should reflect he's denying it's his apartment, and you'll no, have to. No, I said I don't know that it's my apartment. Okay, so if you want to put those into evidence, they're going to have to be authenticated. He, yes, obviously, Honor. he's not going to authenticate them. Yes, Your Honor. Let the record reflect on handing the original back to you. So how history. can they be, not be in an evidence if she's showing them to you? They're not into evidence. They don't so become part of you this just trial. Don't, okay, so I can show something to a jury. What I'm saying is in writing my decision, this will not be part of right. evidence. It's not admitted into okay. evidence. And unless she gets someone to authenticate it, because you've obviously said you don't know whether it's your apartment or not. Mm. OK. 
Can I use the bathroom, Your Honor? No, you can't. What's the next question? Well, I do need to use it. So if there's some point in the near future where I could. You, can you hold on for another 15 minutes? That would be pushing it. Okay, let's push it. What's the next question? Actually, I don't think I can, Your Honor. It won't be long. Five seconds. Five seconds, okay. I'll be right back. Back on the record. Head back on the record. I'd like you to turn to Exhibit 3, Mr. Coughlin. Page 4. Three, page four. Okay. Under section 8.1, credentials and licenses, mm -hmm. you state three lines down, licensed as a patent agent since May of 2003, friends, though upon becoming an attorney that may now be classified as a patent attorney. Correct? Objection, relevance, importance, whatever, whatever. Okay. I don't know. Is that what it says? I'd like you to turn to Exhibit 74. Okay. Page 2 of that exhibit is a printout from the United States Patent and Trademark Office. And it says last name Zachary, first name, I mean, last name Coughlin, first this name Zachary. This is 74? 74, page 2. Objection, foundation, authentication. I haven't put it into evidence yet, Your Honor. Well, then put it into evidence. Okay. She hasn't put it into evidence. You need to look at it. Exhibit 74. Middle name I don't B. understand why things can't be put into evidence or propounded, you know, before the trial. It's like this rogue prosecutor thing, the Duke lacrosse case. And what's the um, question? You know. Question, um, on this exhibit... It Prosecutors states, should have some ethics. Registration really, number 53905, you know. and then it states attorney slash agent, and it lists agent. What? Correct? It said attorney slash agent? And it lists agent. Correct? Date I don't registered, know. What's this? Something you printed off their website? Date registered as agent 5203. I don't know what this is. Is this something you printed off their website? Is it accurate? Is it updated? You tell me. Do you even know what a patent attorney or agent is? Is there a bar to take that? Do you know? Do you know anything What's about that? What's it the question? It was uh, just... Um, and I'm not of, answering anything today, that's not authenticated. As of May 7, 2007, Mr. Coughlin, are you registered as a patent attorney or a patent agent? Um, I don't know. And I'd object to, if, if you're just going on a website and printing off something off on a website and acting like that's Question. law, it's ridiculous. You're like the rogue prosecutor in the Duke lacrosse case. You're out of control, Ms. Kagan. Your Honor, I move to strike these comments that Mr. Coughlin the, the is making against me disparaging my character. The comments will be stricken from the record. Don't have the character you have if you don't want to be compared to the Duke lacrosse uh, rogue the prosecutor. Question. You know, or rogue prosecutors in other instances where, you know, What's getting getting a uh, promotion is more important than the truth. So, Mr. Whatever. Coughlin, on July 13, 2004, the Committee of Bar Examiners advised you that it would not recommend your admission, but offered to hold your application in, in abeyance so the committee may evaluate your recovery from alcohol abuse. Correct? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's turn to page, Exhibit 37, which is already in evidence. Exhibit 37 is a letter dated July 13, 2004, to Jerome Fishkin from Deborah Murphy Lawson, Director of Moral Character Determinations. The first paragraph states, I am writing to inform you of the status of your client's application for determination of moral character. 
the Committee of Bar Examiners Committee, does not believe it is now in a position to recommend your client's admission to the Supreme Court of California pursuant to the provisions of Rule 10 of the Rules Regulating Admission to Practice Law in California rules. However, the committee has decided that your Objection client's relevance. Are we going to take up the whole day with, with Ms. Kagan's um, It's overruled. What's cross direction or whatever? However, the committee has decided that your client's application will be held in abeyance until January 13, 2005, so the committee may evaluate his recovery from alcohol abuse. From from the alcohol abuse. Oh, okay. The committee requires that your Does client... Does it say in whatever the hell else you want to look at? May I finish, Mr. Do, I don't know. Can you read? Mr. Coughlin, the committee requires please let her finish. The committee requires that your client participate in the State Bar of California's Lawyer Assistance Program, LAP, which has been established to provide assistance with mental health and uh, Did you say it says participate? To members of the legal profession. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. That's what the letter states, correct? Mr. Requires Coughlin? that your client part participate. Does it say it requires he enroll in it for five years and and open up the checkbook the to us? Question. It doesn't say that, does it? In fact, on July 19, 2004, you executed executed a stipulation pursuant to Rule 10, Section 4, which is also called the abeyance stipulation, agreeing to have your recovery from alcohol abuse monitored by LAP, correct? Did, did it say alcohol abuse and whatever the hell else it is you want to poke around in? Let's look at Exhibit 38, page 2. Because I didn't see that part. If you can point that out to me. It's already in evidence, Mr. Coughlin. It's a stipulation pursuant to Rule 10, Section 4. At the bottom, it's signed Zach Coughlin, 7904. Correct? This is something that you signed? What's this, page 3? Page 2 of Exhibit 38. Um, let's see. There's a stipulation. The purpose of reviewing this application for determination of moral character in order to evaluate his recovery from alcohol abuse, period. I don't see where it goes on and says, Plus, we'll ask you questions about your psychosexual history, and Mr. we'll, Coughlin, that wasn't the we'll question. just go the question on was, with whatever you sign we this want, document? because it's our blank check. Mr. Coughlin, <laughs> did you sign the document? Um, See where it says I'm I'm enrolling in lap in here. Mr. Coughlin, that wasn't the question posed. The question is, do you recognize did you sign this document? I think so. Then on June 30th, 2005, you um, completed the telephone intake process. And that's a full year later, isn't it? Because this was signed at 04, so why did it take a year for them to do their telephone Mr. intake? Kaplan, that wasn't the and question. why do I have the numerous question. correspondences in the meantime sent to them, including status reports? Why is it Mr. a year? Kaplan, when you that's present not the question. your side of the case. Am I going to have time? Because Ms. Kagan's no. hogged everything so far. Okay, good. Okay. Mr. Coughlin, um, on June 30th, 2005, you enrolled in LAP. You completed the telephone intake process, correct? No, I enrolled in LAP prior to that. Let's look at Exhibit 72, page 26. Are, are you on Exhibit 72, page 26, Mr. Coughlin? I'm not sure. Why don't you take your time and, and look for that? Well, thank you, Susan, I will. Page 26 is entitled Lawyer Assistance Program, LAP, Notification of Enrollment. It states, this is to serve as notification that Zachary B. Coughlin contacted the Lawyer Assistance Program on June 22, 2005, and has completed the telephone intake process. Correct? Um, I don't, I don't know because I, I had been speaking with them and sending them quarter, quarterly reports since early '04, I believe. So I don't know how this could be accurate. Let's turn, and then on. I don't know why they decided to take a year to decide that I had finally completed some arbitrary telephone intake interview. Okay, what's the next question? On August 31st, Mr. Coughlin, 
you were accepted into the, uh, you were provided a letter that you were accepted into the LAP program on August 18, 2005, correct? I can't say that's correct. Let's turn to the same exhibit, page 22. So that's exhibit 72, page 22. Pages 22 through 23 of this exhibit is a letter dated August 31, 2005 to Zachary B. Coughlin, and it is signed Janice T. Thiebault, Thiebault. And it states, paragraph one, welcome to the Lawyer Assistance Program, LAP. The LAP Evaluation Committee formally accepted you into the program on August, 15, August 18, 2005. The committee designed an individualized participation agreement. After an agreement. extended period of playing hide the ball. Mr. Coughlin, right. the committee designed an individualized participation agreement that includes recommendations to enhance your recovery. Your case manager okay. will provide a copy of your agreement for review and signature. Please sign within five business days and return the agreement to your case manager. Let the healing begin, huh? And then I just want to skip down to paragraph three. The evaluation committee determines completion of the program. The LAP will acknowledge and verify both successful participation in the program and successful completion of the program. Successful participation is defined as achieving and maintaining sobriety, stability, and full compliance with the terms of the participation agreement. Objection, relevancy. Where are we going with this? Did you receive this letter, Mr. Coughlin? Objection, Your Honor. Overruled. Um, I received a lot of letters from LAP. Then on September 6, 2005, you signed the LAP participation plan, correct? Um, I remember signing things earlier than that. The question was, on September 6, 2005, you signed the LAP participation plan, correct? Do you have an exhibit I can look out for? Yes, I do. Exhibit 72, pages 12 through 13. Okay, yeah, that looks like my signature. And this uh, participation plan had two parts. Part A had nine conditions. But I had already signed one of these plans, like, months and months before. finish the question, Mr. Coughlin. Part A has nine conditions, and Part B has nine conditions, correct? Um, let me review this for a second. I see it where it says you can't take prescription meds unless it's approved by a physician in consultation with the program. That's not the question, Mr. Is Coughlin. Is that where they're practicing medicine? Or? Mr. Coughlin, that's no? not the question. Okay. The question is Part A has nine conditions and Part B has nine conditions, correct? Um, I believe so. And at the top of page 12, um, it states, I, Zachary B. Coughlin, am participating in the Lawyer Assistance pro Program here and after, LAP or program. And then the, um, next pa uh, the third sentence is, therefore, in cooperation effort, a cooperative effort with the LAP, I agree to follow the conditions. I will. And then it sets forth the conditions, correct? The conditions we just discussed? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? You agree to uh, follow the conditions that are set forth in Part A and Part B of this exhibit, Mr. Coughlin? Um, which exhibit is this? Exhibit 72, pages 12 through 13. Um, Your Honor, if I need to come back next week, I would um, say that I won't agree to a telephone um, testimony yeah, by the doctor. Please answer the I'm question. I'm just pointing that okay. out at this point. Court notes. So notes. 
I'm sorry, what was your question, Susan? You agreed to follow the conditions set forth in Part A and Part B of this participation plan, correct? Objection. We're just asking the same question again and again. Well, you haven't answered it, Mr. Well, Crawford. we talked about signing it, right, Susan? 